Okay, there we go. So uh, that's the, the cream boiled. So what we we'll want to do now is just add the chocolate. Now watch not burn your fingers. It's probably better to do it the other way around, um, but I want to keep it in the glass. Okay, just pour the chocolate in. Like so. Now what I would normally do if I was making lots of ganache for a class, what I do is I do that. I've got to make like maybe 10, 10, 10 times this. I would cover that up like that, so it's all melting inside nicely. I then pour the next uh, lot into there, pop it in the microwave, weigh the chocolate out. And by the time that's all done, uh, the, the cream's really zapped the, the chocolate and it's really soft. It makes it really easy to stir. Now, the other thing is uh, you can use an electric whisk, a little hand whisk. Just make sure you put a, a cover over, just like a towel or something or a bag, just so it doesn't spray everywhere or, or use an extra large bowl so it catches the, the spray from the side of it. It just helps the hand because if you're making ganache every day, it does get a little bit sore in the hand. In fact, when we had the bakery, uh, Agatha, who was a baker, she had two and she used to stand with two at the same time, which was quite, quite cool to, to watch. Okay, so you'll see uh, the chocolate starting to melt. Now some chefs say use a balloon whisk. I've tried a balloon whisk and I, I find uh, it just gets in a bit of a mess. So I prefer just to do it with a wooden spoon. Okay. Okay, so just mixing round. Just watch not burn your fingers. And just bringing it up so you're just mixing it all the way through. Now in fairness, the Elm Lee does give it a slight more grainy effect. Uh, where when you use the fresh cream it looks a lot more glossy. Um, but it works the exact same way in the cakes. I've been making in Spain, I've all been made pretty much used with this stuff. Okay, there we are, so it's coming together. Sometimes you think, oh my goodness, it's looking like it's going to curdle, um, but then all of a sudden it comes back together. Now, I've been making ganache from, from college, so, so for many years, um, and it's just a, it's a great product to use. Now, as I say, you'll get all different chocolates and all different creams. Um, just remember where you get your chocolate from, and when the ganache works, just that's, that's the chocolate to buy. Okay, because some people find it really difficult to get a good chocolate, um, which I don't have any problems with because I, I use Aldi, Lidl, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's. I've used them all and they've all worked really well. The only one is Aldi um, white chocolate. It's a little bit different and uh, sometimes it's, it's, not, it's not very strong. So the white chocolate, I always tell you to try and buy a little bit more, uh, more expensive white chocolate. And this one is a two to one ratio. Okay, so two chocolate to one cream. Uh, and that's dark chocolate. With the milk chocolate, you may want to just increase the chocolate a little bit. So just maybe an, an extra handful of chocolate in there, just to sort of thicken it up a little bit. Um, and then for the white chocolate, a big handful of extra white chocolate or slightly reduce the cream. So, and that's, that's generally, but I generally keep to a two to one ratio. And if it's, if it's in the middle of the winter and it's cold, a cold winter, uh, then you just, um, keep to the recipe, if it's going to be a really warm uh, summer's day, just whack more chocolate in to thicken up a little bit so it sets better. So it is a case of just uh, trial and error, but if you stick to the two to one ratio, you should get on fine. Now look at that, you can see how lovely, and look, it's actually went really clear. Normally it's a bit more grainy than that, so that's good. And you can see there, there's no lumps, just check for lumps. That all looks good. And that's it, that's, that's as easy as it is. So much easier than making buttercream, because when you make buttercream, the icing sugar's everywhere. It's, it's a bit of a mess, but that's it made. Put it to one side to cool. Just put a little mesh over the top so there's no, no beasties to get into it. Once it's cooled, obviously take the, uh, the wooden spoon out uh, and then just put some cling film over the top. Mark when you made it and then pop it in the fridge. And then the, the, the date for the ganache, Again, it really depends on how you're using it and what cream and, and chocolate you're using. But generally, a rule of thumb is to keep yourself safe a month. But I've used ganache after three months. It's been in the fridge and it's been absolutely fine. And you'll know if it's not fine because uh, it'll taste disgusting and it'll mould. Uh, and it moulds very quickly if it's off. Um, so, uh, but the best thing to do is do a little taste test every day. Just a little spoon of uh, the, the, the chocolate and just see how it tastes. And that'll give you your own shelf life with your chocolate. Okay.